Hello, everybody. Today we are talking on Utotal English Advanced Unit 1 Challenges. Today we are going to listen a lot. So, listening. Listen to Mark Spiner talking about language learning. Make notes on the questions. Here are five questions. First, how many languages does he speak? The second, where and how did he learn them? What special techniques does he use? How does he feel about language? And what problems does he have? We are going to listen to his story twice, two times. So let's begin. Pack two. Mark, you speak seven languages. That's right. Can you tell us a little about your level of fluency and proficiency in the languages? Well, Russian is probably my best language. I speak it pretty well because I spend a lot of time in the country, but it's a little rusty. I have quite a good ear, uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing. My accent suggests that I know more than I really do. The other languages are mainly Latin-based, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, but also French and Polish. You learn languages through a combination of techniques. That's right, in different ways, like going to classes, travel, private study. Did you use any special techniques? Any magic secrets? <laughs> secrets? No, but I did do some interesting things like memory training. I watched films in their original language and at some point I tried sticking lists of words around the house. But I think it was more a case of being motivated and the biggest motivator was a love of languages and pleasure in communicating with them. Would you say you learn several languages if you already know languages in that family? For example, you speak Spanish and French, so maybe it was fairly easy to pick up Portuguese. I wouldn't say it was easy, but... Yeah, I would definitely say it's a help, although occasionally it gets confusing. You might be speaking one language and suddenly a word from another language slips out, causing complete confusion. Is there any little word of encouragement you could offer those poor souls who are trying to master a language? Uh, well, what I would say is that knowing how to read and write a language doesn't mean you can speak it. You really have to get there and try to speak at every opportunity. Take risks. Don't be afraid to look stupid, because that's the only way you're going to learn. And, you know, everyone has to start somewhere. As a young man, I went to France after years of studying French to degree level, and embarrassment. I couldn't speak the language or understand anything. All I could do was order breakfast in my hotel. Great. You do the notes. And uh, we will listen to it once again. Track two. Mark, you speak seven languages. That's right. Can you tell us a little about your level of fluency and proficiency in the languages? Well, Russian is probably my best language. I speak it pretty well because I spend a lot of time in the country. But it's a little rusty. I have quite a good ear, uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing. My accent suggests that I know more than I really do. The other languages are mainly Latin-based, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, but also French and Polish. You learn languages through a combination of techniques. That's right. In different ways, like going to classes, travel, private study. Did you use any special techniques? Any secrets? <laughs> no, but I did do some interesting things, like memory training. I watched films in their original language, and at some point I tried sticking lists of words around the house. But I think it was more a case of being motivated, and the biggest motivator was a love of languages and pleasure in communicating with Languages, if you already know languages in that family. For example, you speak Spanish and French, so maybe it was fairly easy to pick up Portuguese. I wouldn't say it was easy, but yeah, I would definitely say it's a help, although occasionally it gets confusing. You might be speaking one language and suddenly a word from another language slips out, causing complete confusion. Is there any little word of encouragement you could offer those poor souls who are trying to master a language? Uh, that's a tricky one. What I would say is that knowing how to read and write a language doesn't mean you can speak it. You really have to get there and try to speak at every opportunity. Take risks. Don't be afraid to look stupid, because that's the only way you're going to learn. And you know, everyone has to start somewhere. As a young man, I went to France after years of studying French to degree level, and embarrassment. I couldn't speak the language or understand anything. All I could do was order breakfast in my hotel. Okay, so please send your answers to me, and do you have similar experience of language learning? Answering question also. A 
and now we are going to speak about grammar, epigramming. So we are given five sentences. And in the previous lesson, we studied some new words like succeeding, stem from, benefit from, get nervous about, and distinguish between. Let's read all these sentences. Zomer was still a schoolboy when he succeeded in learning Swedish, Sanskrit, and Persian. Mastery, he believes, stems from the job solving the puzzle. Ron benefited from the fact that he came from a multilingual family. Do they ever get nervous about gobbling their various languages? This can happen, especially when it is difficult to distinguish between related languages. And so what's the point? We have some prepositions after verbs, nouns and adjectives, and they always have an object. And when the preposition is followed by a verb, the verb is usually in the in form. So let's divide them. Stem from joy, benefit from the fact, and distinguish between languages. But succeed in learning, get nervous about gobbling, So make your own examples. And we are going to practice. Please fill in the gaps with the necessary preposition. For example, do you think you will succeed in passing your next exam? And so on. Stop the video and do the sentences. Stop the video and do the sentences. Stop the video and do the sentences. Okay, now we are ready to get speaking. Answer these questions yourself. Do you think you will succeed in passing your next exam? For example, as uh, somebody can answer this question, the answer will sound like, yes, I think so. I've been studying hard and I really hope I achieve my goal. If you could improve your English by watching DVDs, by living in an English-speaking country, or by studying from books, which would you opt for? I would choose to immerse myself in the language and culture by living in Canada or Australia. Do your problems in English stem from poor grammar or are there other problems? I think accuracy is important too. It's difficult to listen to someone whose speech is full of mistakes and it distracts you from the content of what they're saying. Do you feel you're lacking vocabulary? Yes, I don't know many idioms, phrasal verbs and informal expressions. Even at advanced level, some students spoken English is riddled with errors. Does this matter or is fluency more important? A lot of the difficulties come from the fact that I can't understand native speakers when they speak fast, but I also need to work on my grammar. Please stop the video and answer these questions yourself. The next part. What distinguishes your first language from English? Some of the vocabulary is similar, but the grammar is completely different. What types of classroom exercises appeal to you? I'd like class discussions, best of all, and also role plays. Is pronunciation worth bothering about, or are you happy to keep your accent? I always make an effort with some sounds of English, but I know I'll never sound like a native speaker. 
Are you nervous about giving presentations in English? Speaking in public worries me a little bit, but I think it's a good thing to do in class. How can your vocabulary benefit from using the media? Listening regularly to the news or looking at websites is good for learning new words. Please stop the video and answer all these questions yourselves. Thank you very much for attention. See ya.